Okay, so we're looking at coordinate geometry of the circle, and in this video, we'll be looking at finding the equation of circles. So there's a few different scenarios. It's a very sort of common question to find the equation of circle. Equation of circle. The really common question, there's just a few different approaches to it, and a few different ways in which the question could be asked. So this question says, find the equation of the circle which contains the point A, B, and C. So what they're saying is that somewhere on this circle is the point A, maybe over here is the point B, and maybe down here is the point C. I don't know where on the circle they really are, but I know all three points are on it. I also know that the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared plus 2, gx plus 2, fy plus c is equal to zero. Now, if you go back to coordinate geometry of the line, and if I said this point D is on the line, D will satisfy the equation of the line. Of the line. Now a similar situation happens with the circle. If A, B and C are on the circle, when I sub A in and call it X, Y, I'll get 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 2G by 2 plus 2F by 1 plus C is equal to 0. That's this. Uh, 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5 plus 4g plus 2f plus c is equal to 0, 4g plus 2f plus c is equal to minus 5. Okay, well what have we got here? That is one equation with three unknowns. Well, that doesn't really help us three unknowns because we're going to need three equations. But that's not the end of the world because I have point b as well and I could go 0 squared plus 5 squared plus 2g by 0 and having that 0 is actually really nice it makes the question an awful lot easier plus c is equal to 0 this ends up being 25 plus 10f plus c is equal to 0 10f plus c is equal to minus 25 that's equation 2 and equation 3 then would be found by going x, y. And we get, what is it? Minus 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2g minus 1 plus 2f2 2 plus c is equal to 0. Continue to multiply that out. Minus 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, so that's 5 minus 2g plus 4f plus c is equal to 0, minus 2g plus 4f plus c is equal to minus 5. And I have three equations now. Okay, when you have three equations, I'd highly recommend writing all three of them out again, directly under each other. 4g plus 2f plus c is equal to minus 5, 2, is 10f plus c is equal to minus 25 and 3 minus 2g plus 4f plus c is equal to minus 5. So we have three equations with three unknowns. There are many different approaches you could take here. What I would suggest is I like the fact this equation here has only two unknowns. So I have one equation with two unknowns. So that means out of equation one and equation three, I want to get an, an another equation that has only an f and a c. The reason I want only an f and a c is because equation two only has an f and a c. So if I leave equation one the same way, 4g plus 2f plus c is equal to minus five, and equation 3, if I multiply that by 2, I get minus 4g plus 8f 
plus 3c is equal to minus 10, I'll get 10f plus 4c, not 3c, this is a 2c here, uh, 3c is equal to minus 15. And that's equation 4. Now I take equation 4 and equation 2. 4, which is 10f plus 3c is equal to minus 15. And equation 2, well, I want to get rid of the, the f's. So I go equation 2 times minus 1. So minus 10f minus c minus 25 by minus is plus 25. So 2c is equal to 10. C is equal to 5. Okay, brilliant. Well, I've gotten C now. I just need to get F and G. Well, this is the really quick and easy way to do it. I've already kind of gotten an equation where one of them is already on its own. So I could go 10F plus 5 is equal to minus 25. 10F is equal to minus 30 f is equal to minus 3. What else do I need to find? I need to find g. Now generally there's one of the, the equations that are a little bit easier to work with. So it's either going to be equation 1 or equation 3. I'd probably go equation 1 just because it's a little bit easier to deal with all positives there. Plus 2 times f which was minus 3. Plus c so it's plus 5 is equal to minus 5. 4g minus 6 is equal to minus 10. 4g is equal to minus 4. g is equal to minus 1. Okay, brilliant. When I have uh, g, f, and c, all I'm doing is coming back and subbing them in here into the equation of the circle. So it's x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0 x squared plus y squared minus 2x because I'm summing it in for g I'm summing a minus 1 in for g and minus 6y plus 5 is equal to 0 so talking through the question again when you have three points that are on the circle they should all satisfy this equation sub them each in separately get three equations in g f and c and then it's a simultaneous equations question which you would have done at the very start of fifth year this question is very very similar find the equation of the circle which contains okay well it's a circle so it's x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0 and it should contain now this point's brilliant the zero zeros are the ones that are make it really nice because if I go x and y it's 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 2g by 0 is 0 plus 0 plus c is equal to 0 so c is equal to 0 so the equation is really x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy is equal to 0. Now all I need to worry about is calling this xy. So I'm getting 3 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 times, th uh, times g times 3 plus 2 times f times 1 is equal to 0. That's 10. 3 squared is 9 plus 1 is 10 plus 6g plus 2f is equal to 0. 6g plus 2f is equal to minus 10. x, y. 3 squared plus 9 squared plus 2g times 3 plus 2 f by 9 is equal to 0. 3 squared is 9, 9 squared is 81. So that's 90 plus 6g plus 18f is equal to 0. 
6g plus 18f is equal to minus 90. Oh, well, the 6g's look really nice here, don't they? This is equation 2 and this is equation 1. So I'm going to go equation 2 and equation 1 times minus 1. The reason I'm doing it in that order is because if I do it this way, I've got a positive f. 6g plus 18f is equal to minus 90 minus 6g minus 2f is equal to 10. 16f is equal to minus 80 and then f is equal to minus 5. Okay, brilliant. We have f. We just need to go and find g. So we're taking this one. 6g plus 2 minus 5 minus 10. 6g minus 10 is equal to minus 10. 6g is equal to 0. g is equal to 0. Okay. x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. We said c is 0 and g is 0, so it's x squared plus y squared plus 2 times 0x plus 2 times minus 5y plus c is equal to 0. We're just getting x squared plus y squared minus 10y is equal to 0. Remember, the c was a 0. Okay, so very similar to the previous question, if not a little bit nicer, particularly because of the fact we have a 0, 0. Anytime you have a 0 in one of these coordinates that are on the circle, they satisfy the equation, it makes life an awful lot easier. I'm just going to flick back to the previous question to show you. Remember here, we had a zero in the x coordinate, and when we multiplied it out, we only had two unknowns. So it does make life an awful lot easier having that. Okay, this style of question really, really helps you to draw out a little diagram. Okay, so I have a line that touches the circle. I don't know much about the line. Don't know much about the line, uh, but I know it touches it at the point A, which is five, three, and B, which is the point two four now or minus two four? They're not even anyway accurate. B should be all the way over on the left, but look, it doesn't need to be accurate. I know A and B will satisfy x squared plus y squared plus two gx plus two fy plus c is equal to zero. I'm going to do that really quickly just to speed us up. So it's 5 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 by g by 5 plus 2 by f by 3 plus c is equal to zero. 10g plus 6f plus c. 25 plus 9 is 34 minus 34. That's equation 1 from A. In equation 2 from B, we're going to get minus 2 squared plus 4 squared plus 2g by minus 2 plus 2f by 4 plus c is equal to 0. Uh, minus 4g plus 8f plus c is equal to 0. Uh, minus 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 squared is 16. So we're getting that equals to minus 20. That's equation 2. Okay, well, we're kind of still in a little bit of trouble because I have two unknowns, three unknowns, in both sets of equations, but I've only two equations. Now, curiously, we can find the perpendicular, the perpendicular to this line that goes through the point of contact. This line here, this black line is a tangent. It touches the circle at only one point. A perpendicular to a tangent at the point of contact goes through the center. And the center from our log tables is minus g minus f. So minus g and minus f are on this red line. If they're on that red line, 
they must satisfy that red line. So find the slope of 3x minus 4y minus 3 is equal to 0. So that's 4y is equal to 3x minus 3. And y is equal to 3 over 4x minus 3 over 4. So the slope of the black line is 3 over 4. The slope of the red line is minus 4 over 3. Remember, invert and change the sign. And we know a point on the red line is 5, 3. So we could find the equation of that red line. y minus 3 is equal to m, which is minus 4 over 3, by x minus 5. That's 3y minus 9 is equal to minus 4x plus 20. 4x plus 3y is equal to 29. That's the red line. That's equation 3 for the time being. What do I know for a fact is on that red line? I know for a fact that minus g minus f is on that. And why is the center minus g minus f? Go and look at the log tables. It'll say that the center is minus g minus f. So I know that if I sub in minus g for my x and I sub in minus f for my y, 3 times minus f, this equation should make sense. I'm getting minus 4g minus 3f is equal to 29. And that's my equation 4, really. That's the one I'm going to use. So I have equation 1, which is 10g plus 6f plus c is equal to minus 34. Equation 2, minus 4g plus 8f plus c is equal to minus 20. And equation 4, which is minus 4g minus 3f is equal to 29. Now, here, which one of these do I like so far? I like this one because there's only two variables in it. So from these two, I want to get a new equation that has only g's and f's in it. I can do that by going equation 1 and equation 2 times minus 1. So equation 1, and we're going to get rid of the c's. 4g minus 8f minus c is equal to 20. That's 14g minus 2f is equal to minus 14. That's equation 5. And now I'm going to deal with equation 5 and equation 4 together. So equation 5 times 3, minus 3, minus 3, gives me minus 12. Sorry, equation 5 times minus 3 doesn't give me minus 12. Uh, 14 times 3 is 42. And I'm doing it by minus 3. So it's minus 42g plus 6f is equal to 14 times 3 is 42. And I'm doing it by minus 3. So it's plus 42. And then I take an equation 4. And I want the f's to disappear. So I'm multiplying it by 2. So it's minus 8g minus 6f is equal to 29 times 2 is 58. So I'm getting minus 50g is equal to 100. g is equal to minus 2. Okay, this definitely feels like we're going the right way now. Uh, here I want the f's. So it's 14 times minus 2, minus 2 times f is equal to minus 14, minus 28 is equal to, whoops, minus 28, minus 2f is equal to minus 14, um, what would that work out to be, 2f is equal to 14, minus 14, and f is equal to minus 7, Brilliant. 
and our last one that we need to get is c so i'm going to take equation one 10 times minus 2 plus 6 times minus 7 plus c is equal to minus 34 minus 20 minus 30, uh, 42 plus c is equal to minus 34 c is equal to minus 34 plus 20 plus 42 c is equal to 28 once we have all of that information go and sub it back in to your x squared plus y squared plus 2 gx plus 2 fy plus c is equal to 0 x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 14y plus 28 is equal to 0 and that's coming from the g being multiplied in here and the f being multiplied in here and just to reiterate that point earlier on the perpendicular to a tangent at the point of contact so if i have a tangent here and i have a perpendicular to it at the point of contact must pass through the center of the circle so if i could find this line it will always contain the center of the circle another nice little note to go with that a caveat would be that if you have a a chord that is a line joining two points any two points so it doesn't have to be a and b it could be a and d over here the perpendicular okay so perpendicular means 90 degrees from the center of a circle to a chord bisects the chord so if i have a chord and if i know i have a line that is perpendicular to the chord and goes through the center it's perpendicular to the chord and it goes through the center it must bisect the chord now more often than not here what we use is the fact that is the sort of the converse to that the opposite to it is if you have a chord uh, let's go a and b and you were to find the midpoint the midpoint of this so the the bisector of it if you were to bisect those two points and you were to find the slope of a and b you could then find the perpendicular bisector this is the perpendicular bisector to that chord so a and b must be on this sorry not a and b minus g minus f must be on that green line i'm sort of asking could you find the equation of that green line absolutely what if you had another point let's call it c and you did the same thing between A and C. Imagine if you got the bisector of that. Okay, well, you've gotten the midpoint there. Could you find, could you find the slope of AC? Yes would hopefully be the answer. If you can find the slope of AC, you could find the perpendicular slope. So you could find this, the equation of a that orange line because you found the midpoint you found the slope of the initial orange line and then let's change it to colors you could find the slope of that blue line and what do you know about the blue line minus g minus f should be on it as well so hold on a second the point where the green line and the blue line hit each other that's where minus g minus f is that's the center how do you find where two lines hit each other? You use simultaneous equations. So you'd use simultaneous equations there. Okay, so this question is actually easier than the last question that we were looking at. We are given a line and we're told that the center is on this line. So minus G minus F must satisfy this line. It must be on, remember minus G minus F is the center of the circle. So minus g minus f must be on that line and we're getting minus 3g plus f minus 7 is equal to 0 that's our equation 1 
the center must be somewhere along that line. We know that the circle passes through point A and B. So that means A and B must satisfy x squared plus y squared. I don't need that. x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. So if I sub in, this is x and y. 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2g by 1, which would just be 2g, plus 2f by 1, which would just be 2f, plus c is equal to 0. We're getting 2g plus 2f plus c is equal to minus 2. That's our second equation. And we're going to repeat, repeat the process with b. So this is with a, this is with b. And now we're going to use that as our x and our y. So it's 2 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 2 g by 2 plus 2 f by minus 1 plus c is equal to 0. It's 4 g minus 2 f plus c is equal to 2 by 2 is 4 minus 1 by minus 1 is 1 so I'd get plus 5 and then I subtract 5 from both sides. So I have three equations right now with three unknowns. So I have equation 1, which is minus 3g plus f minus 7 is equal to 0. I have equation 2, which is 2g plus 2f plus c is equal to minus 2. And I have equation 3, which is 4g minus 2f plus c is equal to minus 5. And if I take my time and just consider... But previously I would have thought, oh, well, let's try and get uh, another equation with g and f. But right now, if I look at these carefully, um, actually, no, I will try and get another equation with g and f. I, will, I thought there was a bit more cancelling that happened there, but there isn't. So no, let's get another equation. I have one equation with g and f. So let's, from here, try and get another equation with g and f. So I can go equation 2 and equation 3 times minus 1. Equation 2 is 2g plus 2f plus c is equal to minus 2 and the other one is going to be minus 4g plus 2f minus c is equal to 5 that's minus 2g plus 4f is equal to 3 that's equation 4 now and we can link equation 1 and equation 4 together the reason I can do that is because they have g's and f's so equation 1 is minus 3g plus f is equal to 7 Equation 4, minus 2g plus f, 4f, is equal to 3. Uh, let's try to get rid of the f's. So equation 1 times minus 4 is equal to 12g minus 4f is equal to minus 28. And equation 4, I can leave the same. It's minus 2g plus 4f is equal to 3. That's 10g is equal to minus 25. g is equal to minus 2.5. That's fine. I can get f from that, from here. Minus 3g plus f is equal to 7. f is equal to 7 plus 3g f is equal to 7 plus 3 times minus 2.5 f is equal to minus 0 0.5 and all of that helps me get c what do i have to go back to for c um probably that's where i have my three equations lined out equation 2 there which says 2g plus 2f 2g equation 2 2g plus 2f plus c is equal to minus 2 that's 2 times minus 2.5 plus 2 times minus 0 0.5 plus c is equal to minus 2 that's minus 5 minus 1 plus c is equal to minus 2 c is equal to Four. So it's x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 
Fy plus C is equal to zero. X squared plus Y squared plus two times minus 2.5X plus two times 0 0.5 Y plus four is equal to zero. X squared plus Y squared minus five X plus Y plus four is equal to zero. Just recapping through the question again, they gave us a line that the center must lie on. When the equation of the circle whose center lies on the line, if the center lies on the line, then minus G minus F is going to satisfy that equation. And I know both of these are on the circle. So that means that from our X squared plus Y squared, we know that we can sub in the minus one or the, the one from A and it's also been subbed in here and here and we can sub in the minus two minus one or the two and the minus one uh, into our x squared plus y squared plus two gx plus two fy plus c is equal to zero. One more question then to wrap our heads around. It's a show that the line x plus six y minus nine is tangent to the circle. Well, if a line is tangent to the circle, the distance from the line to the center, the perpendicular distance from the line to the center is going to be or. So the question is, is or equal to the perp distance from the line to the center is the real question. So from this, x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 10y minus 8 is equal to 0. We know x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. We know the center is minus g minus f and we know the radius is g squared plus f squared minus c all from the log tables. 2g is equal to minus 4 Uh, g is equal to minus 2 and minus g is equal to 2 and 2f is equal to 10 f is equal to 5 minus f is equal to minus 5 so the center is 2 minus 5 that's the center the radius is going to be minus 2 squared plus five squared minus C. C is minus eight, so minus C is going to be minus minus eight, so I'm getting a plus eight. Be very careful with that bit. Four plus 25 plus eight, or is equal to the square root of 37. That's the radius. So I wanna check is the perpendicular distance, the perpendicular distance between the line and the center is it the square root of 37? So I know I'm going to use the perpendicular distance formula from the log tables, ax plus by plus c, all over a squared plus b squared. Okay, well, what's my a, b, and c? That's coming from the equation. a, b, and c are coming from the equation of the line, so a is the coefficient of the x, b is the coefficient of the y, and c is the constant, and then x1, y1 are coming from the point. So what point am I interested in? I'm interested in, so a is one, b is six, c is minus nine. I'm interested in the line and the center. So my x1, y1 is coming from the center. Two minus five is gonna be my x1, y1. So it's the modulus of 1 times 2 plus 6 times minus 5 minus 9 all of the square root of a squared plus b squared which is 1 squared plus 6 squared 2 minus 30 
minus 9 all over the square root of 1 squared is 1, 6 squared is 36. This works out to be minus 39 on top. And it's not 39, 37. Minus 37 on top. And square root of 37 on the bottom. 37s are popping up anyways. Uh, modulus of 30, minus 37 is just 37. Over the square root of 37. And now you should really know that that simplifies down to the square root of 37. The reason for this, we've talked about it before, is root 2 over 2 is the same as root 2 over root 2 root 2, which is the same as 1 over root 2. Because um, here on the bottom line, 2 could be written as root 2 by root 2, and then there's a bit of division cancelling that happens. They cancel out like that, and you're left with only a 1 on the top. Similar logic happens here. 37 over the square root of 37 is the same as root 37, root 37. Oops all over root 37 so all you'd be left with is a single root 37 on top because this root 37 cancels into there and uh, so therefore it is a tangent as the perpendicular distance from center to line is equal to the radius. So the real crux of these questions is deciding what you can sub the piece of information into. Um, so in the previous ones where, where they gave you the three points that were on the circle, you're then going to try and find G, F and C by using um by using the x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to zero so we the three points into there if we know a line goes through the center if we know a line goes through the center you can find uh you can sub in minus g and minus f into that line and it should satisfy the line and then we get another equation out of that with x with g and f and we can use those as our unknowns um, and it just takes an awful lot of practice of subbing them in uh, into those equations and not messing up the simultaneous equations that come out of it and um, you definitely have enough knowledge here anyways to be able to give the questions a go that are associated with this Hopefully you, found, hopefully you found the video useful anyways.